Hey guys, Ken Smith, Ken Smith Fishing. Vexus video part two. I told you in part one that I was going to take three videos because I was going to take my time with this video. And I've, I've really thought about how I want to say this. And the only way to say it is just to speak the truth, which I've done throughout all of my videos with you guys. Um, so I'm not going to post a grade on this boat until I drive the 21 footer in rough seas. Most bass boats that I drive have really, really similar characteristics into the, how they handle. And this boat feels different to me. And specifically what felt different to me was how it corners. It, I love the line in Pretty Woman, it corners like its own rails. This boat really cornered hard almost scary hard, which is fine. I, I'm, I love a boat that'll corner like that, right? But I mean, it was, you could feel it biting the water. And in talking to the Vexus guys, their, their standard line is, it's the best riding boat that's ever been built. We got to redesign a boat from the hull up and that's all great and good. And they even talked to me about, which I don't, I'm, I am no engineer, but they talked to me about the fact that what they discovered in studying boats is when a boat goes in the hull, the way most hulls are configured, it literally creates suction, which is what makes that boat sit down. And they've done something in, in how they built the pad or the step or something on the back of the boat that they don't create that suction, which is why that boat's got a great hole shot. And that's all way above my pay grade. But what I know is what I feel sitting behind that steering wheel. And as I talked about in the bullet video, I respected that bullet because if you over trim a go fast boat, you can put yourself in a world of hurt in a heartbeat, which is why I only drove the boat at 76 miles an hour. Give me 10 or 15 hours behind the wheel of that boat where I'm comfortable how that boat's going to react to all different conditions. I'll drive it as fast as it'll run. Uh, I drove my buddy's bass cat boat the second day I drove it faster than he had ever driven it. He couldn't believe I got 76 miles an hour out of his bass cat. I'm not afraid of speed at all. I'm a little bit of a speed junkie, actually, in a bass boat or in a sports car. But I know from driving a bass boat, I got my first bass boat as a high school graduation present. I've driven a ton of bass boats. And I know how this affects that, right? Uh, Moon Pies Triton, really slow hole shot, really fast on the top end. There's just certain things that are the get and the gives of a bass boat. You get a narrow boat, you get a faster boat. You get a wider boat, you get a more stable fishing platform, but it slows it down. I saw something in driving this boat that, and I, and I only saw it for a second, but it made me, it made me cautious about grading this boat. And, and I'm not gonna beat around the bush with what it was. When we were going, we were just in heavy chop. We were not in rough water. We were in a, a foot, foot and a half of chop, but it was quartering us. And that'll beat you up, right? And the boat started getting a little side slop in it, which is any boat in that, in that quartering chop would get some side slop in it. And when it did, I hit the trim button. I trimmed it down a little bit. And when I did, that nose dove. And in side chop or in going into waves, boy, that's great. You want that nose that'll stay down into that chop. And I toyed with it for just a second, but it was at the end of the day, and he was on a deadline. He had to get home. What scares me about that is in trailing seas, if that nose tendency is to dive, you've got a problem. And I am making no judgment. That's why I'm not grading this boat, right? I want to see this boat. And by the way, as I mentioned, this boat's got different driving characteristics than any other boat I felt, it seems to me, and I think Vexus would tell you the same thing. I'm not going to have an opportunity to spend 15 or 20 hours behind the wheel of this boat, and there's not many of these boats out there. There's very, very few. I think there's only a few hundred of these boats, maybe five or six hundred total across the U.S. And so I'm not going to get the opportunity to spend that many hours behind the wheel of that boat. But I, so what I want to do is I want to get in the, to, to, to know how to drive that boat in rough water, right? Uh, there's a trick to driving every boat in, in different conditions. But Stephen Johnston is a guide on Toledo Bend. My guess is Stephen has as many hours behind the wheel 
in a glass Vexus boat as anybody in the country, right? He is a, sorry those pauses because I get guys with loud trucks going through Zavala right here next to the world headquarters. But Stephen is an accomplished tournament angler with a lot of hours in this boat on one big nasty body of water being Toledo Bend. If anybody in the U.S. knows how to drive this boat in rough water, it's Stephen Johnston. So I want to go to Toledo Bend and get in Stephen's boat on an ugly day and take a ride in this boat with trailing seas and see how it acts. And he's not available. He was at the Texas Team Trail Championship this past weekend on Choke, and he's hunting this week. So it may be another couple of weeks before I get an opportunity to do that. But in fairness to you guys, and in fairness to me, and in fairness to the Vexus people, I'm going to wait until that opportunity before I grade this boat. I think that's the only way to be fair about this. I saw something that concerned me, but I don't know how to drive that boat. So we'll get to the bottom of it. All I'm telling you there is, I mean, this is almost turned into a Vexus commercial, right? I'm like, that's cool. That's cool. I like that. And you're going to see that in this video. I'm like, well, that's a smart idea. And I like how they did that. But if it doesn't ride good, it doesn't matter how cool all the amenities are inside the boat. So this is going to be part two. There will be a part three, assuming I get the opportunity to drive this. Or, or And I don't re really even care to drive the boat, right? I want to ride with Steven or somebody on big rough water and see how this boat handles in trailing seas. It's the only concern I had with this boat other than I'll, I'll come back at the end of this video and tell you the other couple of concerns I had about this boat. So here we go. Part two of the Vexus video. Sorry that was a long introduction, but I want you guys to understand what I'm thinking about this boat right now as I go to part two. You know, it's amazing having my boat to boat with how dirty it is. Yeah. So you leave it to lift off Yeah. All right, so uh, just kind of reviewing the setup. So you see what he's got his dual stacked. I like that. Trim buttons here. Now you can get to it barefooted, but you couldn't get to it with your shoes. And just a light for the nav. And I talked about this. There's no reason to have a bunch of controls on the front deck. Um, I know there's a name for how they did that front end. I've seen that in one other boat. But basically what they're trying to do is they're trying to carry the width of the boat further forward. Uh, Willie noted that one thing he does not like is when he put his second graph in there, he lost his tool spot. Now, personally, I don't carry my tools up there. Uh, by the way, I'm, I'm almost certain that uh, that puck we saw under the dash is going to be the Garmin puck because the Garmin, as you all saw with the Camus review, does not have to be out on the deck. Uh, good rod strap setup. Guys, another cutaway. I, uh, I saw the shape of those rod box tops and did a little research on it, and I'm, I'm actually impressed with the thought process behind this. So they call that a coffin rod box lid, and I'm talking about that V shape at the top. And they've done two things of interest here. First off, they've moved the hinge away from the side of the boat, and then they've angled that top of that box right to where your snap is. And what that allows you to do is open the box with all your rods laying on the front deck and strapped down. Both of those things help you accomplish that. Obviously where the attachment is and also the, the fact that the hinge is further away from the side of the boat and that cutout, if you will, so that there's a point on the end of that rod box. So once again, those guys are demonstrating uh, some good thought process and making the boat just a heck of a lot more fishable for us. It does have some very, very large boxes in it. Oh my. Well finished. Big boxes. I believe I read you can get a seven and a half foot rod in that box. Let me get a spun around here so I don't bang it into a boat dock anywhere. Guys, I had a camera die. You'll see when I get back to the footage. And I didn't realize I lost the footage of the port side rod box. So Vexus has done something different here. They've put a little shelf in the rod box. Uh, and they say it's to help you uh, kind of put your two or three go-to rods uh, separate from the rest of the rods. Personally, uh, I, although I give them credit for trying to be innovative and do a little, little something a little bit different, I lay my three or four or five rods I'm going to use during the day on the deck, and I would rather have the extra space in that rod box than have that shelf in that rod box. But again, kudos to them for trying to be creative. 
Uh, you're also going to hear me talk about the live well in the next section when we go back to the live footage. Now, I make a comment about not liking the water full all the way to the top, but what I discovered later, uh, kind of in my research of this, and this is why this has taken so long on the Vexus, is it's really not to be designed to run all day long completely full to the brink. Really, they want you to run it just like kind of at the same level your normal live well would be, which would be, you know, probably 70, 80% full. And the only time you fill it all the way to the top is if you're going to make a really long run uh, in rough water to protect those fish. If that's the case, which they say it is, I like this live well. I really like those slam latches. I really like that see-through lid. I like that, that, uh, that the outside lid stays in a static position. Those are all really cool things about that live well that I would like to see across all boats. You're, you're also going to hear me talk about the latch lids, which I've talked about in uh, videos before. I don't like the shape of the, of the, uh, the grab part of the, uh, of the latch. And what I don't like about the latches is that top part. It's got hooks on either side, and I've broken a couple of rods in uh, Moon Pie's Triton, which has the same top types of... Uh, types of tops or, or, or grab handle, I guess, is the way to say that. Now, what I will tell you, again, as I continue to learn as I go through these boats is, in order, you see this boat has heavy gasketing around the boxes, and that is designed to keep the boxes as dry as possible. And to do that, you have to have a latch that has compression. They say you can't put a heavy gasket on a box and use slam latches. And as we know, Phoenixes, who use slam latches on some of their models, don't have gas gasketing around their boxes, which they get a lot of knock on that. Some guys say they get squeaky. I've not experienced that personally. Obviously, I've only been for I've only spent a day in one of those. But different thought processes on how to seal the boxes and keep them dry. But the one thing I absolutely would like to see changed on this boat is the grab portion of the handle on the outside. Go back to the round ones like there were in the Rangers so that you're not breaking rods and hanging line in them and doing all the things that those type of uh, latch, uh, uh, latch handles will do to you. I'm a long way off. All right, so I had a battery die on me. So uh, as I was talking about, so they're fiberglass lids and, and I'm not, so I'm not gonna do a Vexus commercial, but there's some stuff in here that I'm real impressed with. And by the way, one that I'm not is I hate those locks. Those are rod breakers. Y'all have heard me talk about them. I like the slam latches, which they have in the live well. And by the way, that's the live well completely full of water. Now, the tournament angler in me, that scares the crap out of me because I've had fish jump out of a live well before. So I'm going to tell you, if you fish out of this boat and you're messing with your fish culling, you better get off to the side and play hockey goalie or one's gonna get away from you. But I understand why they did it the way they did. I really like the see-through lids. You know, Ranger tried that, and theirs would shift back and forth and you couldn't get your live well open. This is a much better setup. Really pretty finished interiors. That's a really deep box. That flooring down there is a, uh, let me show it to you again, is a form of this same sea deck. It's just thinner. I suspect hooks will go in it, but I don't think they'll hang in it. What are these? Just things you can... Oh, that's your rod holders. Oh, okay, I got you. So that's your rod holders with just a band, which is simple, but probably pretty effective. I told Willie, I, I noticed that the box lids feel really, really solid. You've heard some guys talk about some of the other brands where their box lids flex too much. Uh, not something I'm experiencing here at all. I like the front layout. I may have already talked about this, but I don't know if it recorded. You can trim up and down with your toes. There's no reason to have anything else up here other than a light indicating that your nav lights are on or off. I like that a lot. The front of this boat, they call this a pickle fork. Is that right? There was a question mark, so that's correct. So the front of that boat, you see how they've done that, and they're doing that so they can carry it forward further. I think I've seen Allison does that. I want to say that bullet had it in there as well. So not something they come up with, but something where obviously they're copying really good ideas from other boats. And, you know, these guys came from Ranger. Um, so they understand, you know, what does and doesn't make a good boat. And it, what's interesting, sorry for the super close-up, What's interesting is they're willing to innovate and, you know, they built a mold 
that they wanted to build. They didn't. They weren't building off. They weren't splashing somebody else's mold. So you see all the box lids. Look how high the lift is on there. Uh huh. So all the box lids have really high lips on them, and they've got the the uh, gaskets. But note that right there. As in the Camus, they got that metal piece so that your box lid can't come down and crack your fiberglass. That one does not have rod tubes in it. By the way, one of the things I did notice going down the lake, even though you sit, you, you sit at a good level in this boat, and I talked about how clean it looks back there, but I could see over the dash real well. Now, it is a difficult dash to see. And I will say one of the things I don't like about it is going down the lake, that turns into, ah, dang it. I may be going down the lake later, I can show you. This is really hard to see, and I've told you guys, I like having, I like having a bigger trim gauge where I can see what level I'm trimmed at. Now, I think you can get it through here. Willie doesn't have it set up right now where it does. This is something he did, which is brilliant. He bought a little L bracket and installed his Atlas jack plate gauge right there in the middle where he can see it. Uh, and again, this is just a challenge, right? We're putting more and more crap at the dash. It's getting harder and harder to see all of your gauges. And this one's difficult to see at my height. If I was a little bit shorter, it'd probably be easier to see. Uh, got a tilt trim. Uh, got a tilt wheel in it. Uh, how can you get a hold of your old crap handle right there? Yeah. Okay. So the old crap handle. I didn't show y'all where it is, but it's right there. Is there one on the side too? Uh, no, it's right there. Okay. So you grab. Yeah, grab the console and that. Do the seats go literally? Can you raise them up and down? No, but. You uh, oh, that's cool guys I hope I recorded that so you can slide them back and forth and again those are air ride seats now I didn't notice it going down the lake but I guess you would hope you wouldn't notice it going down the lake right uh, it's got a deep open your console right there the center console yep got a deep finished oh that's your cooler okay I got you not huge, but it's got a little sandwich holder in there, which is handy. So you can put your ice in there and it stays cold. Let's look at the back deck and try not to fall in while I'm doing it. Again, the metal piece protecting your fiberglass so in case you close it the wrong way. Hand me that. So I'm real curious about something, guys. As I look at this boat, let me show you from the front. As I look at this boat, I feel like I'm sitting further back in the boat. And the way to measure that is I'm going to just measure from the transom to the backs of the seats and I'll compare it to my boat. But just measure from the carpet to the seats. How far is that? Mm, 47 inches. 47 inches. In my mind, the further back you go, the better your ride's going to be. And I'm not sure Vexus hadn't pushed this back a little bit. I could be wrong, but I think they maybe did. So I'll measure that. I won't get it in the first video, but I'll get it in the second video, and I'll show you all the difference in how far back my seats are in my Ranger versus in this boat. Let me see that tape measure there for a second. Measure it. All right, so across the front, measured up the back pole. So at the back pole right there, we got carpet to carpet, 70, 70 or 71? 72. Okay, so, well, I'm going to say probably 71 carpet to carpet, okay? And I again, I have a terrible memory. Let's measure the back deck, too, as to how that compares with the other boats we've looked at. But as you guys know, you'll be looking at a nice graph that I'll draw up for y'all. And then back here, same spot, 81 inches. So it's 81-ish inches back there. Obviously big decks. Okay, guys, a quick cutaway of the eight boats we reviewed so far. So the Vexus VX20 down there at the bottom is a 20, 11, 20 feet 11 inches, 97-inch beam. Uh, it, it basically almost mirrors the Ranger 520L dimensions. Now, I've been told by the Vexus folks that their boat is wider at the trolling motor pedal. That's not where I've been measuring the boats. And truthfully, when I'm fishing two guys abroad up front, we're not both standing on the trolling motor. We're both standing about that seat pole. So I think that's the, the more appropriate place to measure. You'll notice here that Vexus does not publish their weight of their boat. Uh, 
basically at all. It's not on the website. I've asked. It was not disclosed to me. What they tell me is um, the boat is about 200 pounds lighter than their competitors uh, due to their building process, which I'll get into later. And again, I, through my research, there is a fair amount of variance in boat weights uh, by manufacturers, especially if a chopper gun is in, involved in the, the build of the boat. But uh, their comments were, there's not an industry standard. Uh, do you include live wells? Do you not include live wells? Are the seats in it? Are the wiring harnesses in it, et cetera? So they're not publishing their weight on their boat right now, but um, there you go. They also did not make available to me, and nowhere on the website is the, uh, is the capacity of the live well, either at uh, normal or at full, so I don't have any idea. I I'll tell you they're pretty good size by looking at them. I'd say similar to my Ranger but I don't have solid data to back that up. So Willie pointed something out to me and before we show it to you, I'm gonna, this is like, why didn't anybody else do this? So where do you put your, your running light on your boat? You put it on the back deck. Where does everybody put it when you store it? Under the front deck. Guess what? They put it under the back deck. That is so smart. Good Lord, why didn't we think of that? I'm sure somebody else does that. It's got the jumper switch, which is an old Ranger thing. It's got the cheap battery straps. You know, guys, I know I don't like those. Point that right down here at me. This way. Yeah. Uh, other way. Yeah, no, you had it right. I'm sorry. So it looks like we've got a screw in floor, but I can see below it. We got pump access. We're still running live wells. So we've got really clean setup back here. Yeah, got really clean setup. You can see everything down there. It looks like there's one screw in floor. And I believe, I'll confirm this before we post this video. I believe you can unscrew that floor and reach your sump access without taking your battery charger out. I'm pretty sure that's right. Yep, because it looks like it'll pull up and forward. Something that I, I gotta figure out why it was done this way. Look at my look at my raptor pumps. Is that what that is? Is your raptor pumps right back yeah, there? So okay. one's facing forward, one's facing backwards. I don't know what, what's happened here. <laughs> I noticed this when I was trying to work through my Bluetooth problem the other day. Uh-huh. So it almost if you gotta work on it, looks like you can have to take the back access down. Oh, so there's a back access, which is super handy. Yeah. That is super handy, so you can get to everything but right I there. I know you say you don't like the deal going this way. Yep. But in a boat dock when you've got it in a boat lift I wouldn't buy a boat the other way so that's a great point so he keeps his boat in a boat lift on Eagle Mountain Lake and that's a great point if you're if you're gonna keep your boat in the water most of the time and, and let's face it if you're if you got problems on the water this is the way for it to be set yeah. up actually let's give credit where credit due the way to do it is the way Basscat did it where you take the daggum thing off Oh, yeah. I mean, that's well, cool. To me, it'd be better if you had a sl definitely if you had a slam latch here. That way, it's latched every. Time. It's latched every time. Yeah. Because I've done it. Exactly mm -hmm. what you're, what you're saying, and ripped this bracket out of my yep. Ranger yep. before. Uh, by the way, that's a great point. Willie is a, as a Ranger owner prior to being a Vexus owner, which is what you sought those guys out, right? You like the guys who built your boat, and they're building this boat. So, perfect. I gotta tell you guys, I, I'm I'm impressed with the setup. I, I don't know that I still love the lines from outside the boat, but I love the lines from inside the boat. It's it's a neat setup. Is that an access panel? Yes, this is how you get to the gas tank. Oh. So the floor is actually removable here because see, there's your gas fill. Because mm -hmm. that's one of the things I just said. How do you get to the damn gas tank? Because at the time I didn't realize that it was in the floor. Mm -hmm. And here's your tool stamp storage. Those drawers up under, I think we looked at these earlier, but I don't know that we, you could hear our audio. So it's got a, got a metal drawer there. Now that's not gonna be weatherproof, but there's stuff like he's got in there, right? His, his, his tie-up rope. Maybe treated as a day box, but I think that stuff's probably gonna get wet. Um, yeah, I didn't realize this until I was down on my... It comes with a measure stick, but you really can't see it from here. Yeah, anywhere. yeah. No place to hide your net in here, is there? Yes, they, right here. So the net storage is behind the seat. That's an seat. old Triton style, yeah. So there's actually a channel back there, guys. And it's the, this is padded. 
Oh, you see it's even looped off where it, where it sets in there. And then we were talking. Let me re-clip my mic here. So it's got, again, very nice finished boxes. Oh, it's in the middle, even better. Okay, so you got drains in there. Seems like you'd want them in the back, but I'm sure somebody had a reason to put them right there. You can, you can see it flows towards the center. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's actually contoured to flow to the middle? Yeah. Okay, I got you. But nice big boxes in the back, but I swear to you, I feel like this back deck's a little bit smaller. And this one's not as spongy as my Ranger. Spongy being padded, but I believe it's padded. Uh, what we're going to do, oh, tippy test, let's do that. So the boat sits up very high in the water, one of the things we noticed. So we're both a little bit curious to see how much, I believe this boat is going to be a little more tippy than uh, some of the other boats we've looked at. But I'm going to put Willie on the dock right here and we'll check it out. All right, guys. So dead center of the boat, we've got a eight degree list. I'm having a hard time telling which way that is. Let's do that again. Oh, I said eight degree. Sorry, point eight degree. Nah, maybe not. Because is it is it settled there? It settled back at point one, point two. Okay, so we're uh, we saw we're about level back there. So front deck, I can see about a 1.4 degree list to the to the port side to the starboard side I got a little bit of a glare I'm gonna say a little bit more maybe a two and a half degree list live wells are full by the way back deck you guys can see the number right there and switch over to the port side and there's the list so and again, we've talked about this before. It feels, so the boat rides really high up out of the water. In hindsight now, that's something I would have liked to have measured. But you can see, I mean, we're way up out of the water in this boat. Uh, and I did note when we were fishing earlier, it seems to catch a little bit of wind. Uh, and it does feel a little bit more, and I'm not gonna say unstable, it certainly is easier to move around than my boat. Now, when you put another 300 pounds worth of crap in here, that may change a little bit, but I don't think it changes a lot. You can definitely move this boat more than you can move my boat. Now, I think this boat, now this boat's a 20 footer. I think we said it's 20 foot 10 inches. Yeah. yeah. So it's a foot shorter than my boat. I think it's an inch smaller beam than my boat. But it certainly, it'd be a heck of a lot easier to rock off a stump than what my boat is, for sure. It does have pretty good front access there with that step. Go around your graphs, you'll come on back. Six rod tubes down there. And, and you can put rods in tip first. Oh. The top four tip first. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And then you've got a holder here as well. And one of the things Willie pointed out to me, which is interesting, what's that boat right there? Uh, is they made them oval which is doesn't impact me much but if you are a spinning rod guy it's a lot easier to get your rods in a rod tube that's oval he also put a banging stereo in here which i'm actually curious to hear finished box got the upper tray which is a little thing ranger did years ago that i really like now with mine there's so much crap in there mine actually has carpet you just can't see it down in there carpet folded down in the front of that. There's a little fit and finish that didn't quite get finished. Well, I think it's fallen down since I got it. I'm sure it has. That's actually the only fit and finish thing I've seen on this boat. Uh, we just, uh, Willie pointed out to me, and you can't see them, but the interior lights are red and it's, it's really tricked out from a lighting standpoint. I doubt you guys can see it, but it's got a neat interior light set up. It's also got them up there by the uh, Trolling motor. motor, and I'm sure like everything, every other boat, you can spend another three thousand dollars and get a rigid package in it. But I'm, I'm, I'll pass on those high dollar deals. They're quiet, aren't they? I think they're quieter than mine. 
Oh yeah, they're super quiet. Ooh, the See, new. I didn't have power poles on my other boat. The so. new Raptors are super quiet. Did y'all hear that? Listen. Here they come. They're coming up. So one thing that is weird about this boat to crank it, and that's a hard spot. You got to hit on, and then you got to hit start. It's a double button touch to uh, to crank it, which I'm sure I would get used to, but it seems weird to me initially. Wow, you can move that, Nikki Newberry. You'll love this. You can move that seat way up. Yeah, I made fun of him. He can take it. But it ain't like he don't make fun of me. Trust me. So I was talking about. So that's my eye level right there. And I got good wind protection from that. I can see over it, but the difficulty is seeing my gauges down here. I'm sure he could have lifted these a little more, and Willie even said that there's a, a, a option from the factory that uh, you don't have to put the Bass Boat Technologies mount in there. But uh, you opted for this because you hadn't seen the other one? And the pictures from the factory looked like it was in farther, making it harder to get to the start and switch. Gotcha. I don't know if you heard that, he said, but the pictures he saw, which he didn't see it live, it looked like these set further forward, which made it even harder to reach that starter switch back there. Uh, and that's why he opted to set it up with the Bass Boat Technologies. You know, one of the difficult things about this boat right now is there's so few at the market in the market right now you can't just go call your buddy and say hey i want to come see your vex i mean we didn't know each other i'm so happy you reached out to me uh otherwise you know who knows when we would have got to look at one of these things it, it and i know it's got a ton of technology in it but it just feels like such a simple layout and i guess it's because the caesar seats are sitting up and now, if you fish with three people, this might be a little bit difficult to set up. I'm not sitting there, so I don't care. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> if, I if I'm bringing you along, just be happy we're going fishing, man. My brother and my nephew, you know. It, the I mean, nephew goes right there. <laughs> that's where the kid rides. With the, with okay, so that's part two. And I've already told you my concerns about driving the boat. Uh, and I, there's actually going to be more video in part three besides just taking that boat for a rough ride because I want Stephen to walk me through what he likes about the boat and hopefully what he doesn't like about the boat. I just find it really hard to believe, and Willie did it. You heard Willie say there was a couple of things he didn't like about the boat, uh, and that's the cool thing about doing this with guys you trust. They'll tell you, yeah or no, I like it and I don't like it. Um, the other things that concern me about this boat, and, and I'll talk about them when I grade the boat, are twofold. Uh, number one, the big Vexus sticker logo down the side of the boat below the rub rail. I believe that's going to have problems staying on there. Um, there's a reason Ranger puts their uh, logos above the rub rail now, right? There was a time they didn't. They put stuff down the side of the boat. They don't do it anymore. If you fish where there's timber, if you fish where there's boat docks, I'm going to be amazed if that Vexus stays on there. Now, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm just telling you my concern. We've, I've already talked about Phoenix has a problem with their big raised letter sticker stand on the side of their boat. It's the, I believe it's the same or very similar technology. So that would be a concern of mine. And, again, part of the problem is there's not many of these boats out there to see. I mean, if there were 30 of them on Rayburn already, which in any given weekend there's easily 30 boats on 30 Phoenix boats on Rayburn, you can ride around and see some of those boats are missing letters. You're not going to get that opportunity to fix it, so that's a concern. The second concern is that metal piece also below the rub rail where it says, you know, VX20. It's bolted on, but man, it just, again, it's just my concern. It looks like something that you're going to have problems getting trees rubbed up against it and, and staying as pretty as it comes out of the package. Guys, I may be wrong. I'm just telling you, if I'm going to spend seventy, eighty, ninety thousand dollars on a boat, those are concerns I would have. Those two specifically, and we'll get to the bottom of the ride uh, in part three, assuming I get a chance to take that boat and, and, and let Stephen or somebody else that's got a bunch of hours behind the wheel of this boat in a trailing sea. And I want a trailing sea of two or three or four footers. I want to get out on a nasty day and, and see how that boat's going to do with the nose. So. 
I know that was a really long video, but if you're still watching it, it means you're interested in the Vexus boat, as I am, by the way. I've, I've already, you've seen, I'm, there's some stuff I think is way cool on this boat. Uh, I'm still not completely over the look of the boat. It's so different. But as I said in the first part of this video, uh, when Ranger went from the 361 to the bigger body bass boats, I hated them. But I got used to them, and I love my the look of my boat now. And so if it's a great riding boat with all the amenities that it, that it has that we've demonstrated in these videos, it's a player for me if I can, uh, if I can get the price right. I mean, it's a, it's a lot, right? But um, we'll get to all that in part three when we get to the grade. I'll quit babbling. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, next up, sorry guys, the Falcon that I was going to run got sold. So Jerry uh, uh, has reached out to me from Lake Fork. We're going to go over and do the Falcon hopefully in the next week or two. In the meantime, assuming we don't get rained out day after tomorrow, I'm doing a blazer. I've had a lot of requests for a blazer. We're waiting on a bullet. Excuse me. We're waiting on a ballistic. i got a friend who's got one on order. As soon as it gets here, we'll get out in it. Uh, my nitro buddy wants to wait till his 2021 comes in, which should be any day. So we're waiting on a new nitro. And likewise with Skeeter, the Skeeter that I thought, the FXR that I thought I was going to have to get to run was a 2020 and it's sold, so we're waiting on it. And by the way, a guy told me I could do his Skeeter. He, he runs a white Skeeter. He's commented on one of my videos. And man, I cannot remember who it is. So if you're still watching this video and you'll let me run your Skeeter FXR down here at Rayburn, please reach out to me at kinsmithfishing at outlook.com and let me know because I, I really would like to get to that Skeeter sooner than when Corey's boat's going to be in, which is going to be, I think, in December. So please reach out to me again if you've got a 2021 Skeeter FXR. I'd really like to get out in that boat. And if that doesn't work, I may holler at Monty over at Fun and Son. Monty said he's got one I can take out. So that may be my solution. I'll get to that Skeeter as soon as I can. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you all on the water, or you'll see another Todd Driscoll update on the tracking videos, which is fascinating with those guys tracking bass with telemetry, putting transmitters in them at Toledo and Lake Fork, and then the Blazer video will be up as well. Thanks, guys.